Hi everybody, it's Claire. Uh, welcome to a tutorial from Joanna Basford's beautiful Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. You can see a page that I've got open in front of you which I finished and put onto our Joanna Basford Your Pages Facebook site yesterday. I've had some absolutely wonderful feedback on it from you guys and from the guys on Instagram so thank you so much for that. I must admit I was pretty pleased with the way it turned out. It was an epic effort. Um, days and days and days but it came out really well and thank you for all your lovely, um, your lovely comments on the page. So a lot of you have been asking specifically about one item on this page and it's this silver spoon here and how to create um, a metallic effect with, with grey, with greys basically. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let me lift my book out of the way like that and you can see I've got some things ready underneath so you can see this is my practice book clearly you can see it's my practice book because I was practicing the red velvet background and the um, the golden coins and I was also using some um, some liquid pearls here as well for the crown so what I've got is I have my crisp color pencils um, and I'll tell you what I've got um, you can replicate these with with any brand of pencils um, polychromos or whatever you, what else whatever else you've got to hand so what I've got is and I'm just trying to put them in some order for you there we go that's better that's better so I've got my Prismacolor grey pencils now when I'm doing um, metallics I like to use Prismacolors have three types of greys they have warm greys uh, French greys and they have cool greys and because we are dealing with um, cool metallics today I've picked out the range of um, cool Prismacolor greys so what I've got in my hand is I've got my 90% my 70% my 50% my 30% my 20% and I haven't got my 10% what I've got is actually my white and that's what I'm going to be using to blend the very um, the, the very center of where the, the the metal will be the shiniest and I find it works better than the um, than the 10% grey so let's get started I'm just going to see if I need to zoom in a little bit for you and see if I can make it any better. Any good? Move the book slightly. Okay, so we're going to be working on the spoon. This spoon here. Okay. Now this is how I like to to colour silver metallics. Clearly you will find a lot of other um, tutorials on YouTube with different palettes and different techniques but this is this is this is how I do mine in Prismacolors so hopefully you'll find it quite useful so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the the 90% cool grey and we're going to start by uh, filling in the darkest parts of uh, what would be the the silver spoon so let's have a look at the um the, the ball of the spoon first if you like so you can see where Joanna's put these lines on here and that indicates where there would be a shadow so that helps us with that with that part of the spoon and then what you'll find is going up the stem of the spoon you can clearly see that it's behind some of the items so it's behind these coins here and it's behind the um, the side of the the crown so what we're going to do is because the spoon is sitting behind those items clearly it would be in shadow a little bit from those other things on the page so we're going to put some shadows here as well uh, so this bit here would usually be sticking up from the page so we're going to be putting some shadows around that so we're, we're, we're thinking about light we're th thinking about where the shadows would be and that's why we're starting with the uh, the darkest shade in the range so we're starting with the cool grey right so as you've seen me do before with Prismacolor pencils I'm going to start with the ball of the spoon and just draw myself a little blend line where I want that darkest colour to stop. Okay. Gently, gently, gently. And what we'll do is we will leave this very outer rim of the spoon in a much lighter grey. Because clearly that would be the furthest up into the light. gently gently now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the stem of the spoon and do the same so I'm just going to place where I think 
the shadows would sit in. I'm just going to do a little outline because clearly if you think about it the handle of the spoon would be rounded so as it goes off and curves to either side you would get tiny little shadows on the outline and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a little blend line here because I'm going to do a shadow where it's sitting behind the edge of this crown and then again on the other side a little blend line further behind a little blend line further behind because it's clearly sitting behind the coin here as well again a little blend line further behind we'll do our little outline to indicate the stem of the spoon is curved And then when we start to get up here, we'll do the same again. So these little bits that will be raised just have a shadow in the background, like that. So we're literally just placing on the page where we think those deepest shadows will be. So this part will be sticking up from the spoon. So again, we'll put a little shadow in. I'll put a little shadow around the outside of this because this little shield shaped portion looks like it will be prominent from the rest of the spoon. Like that. Um, then where else? So I think we'll have, let me see. Let me have a little outline here, I think to indicate that this part is curved. And we'll have a little shadow. And I think these little uh, balls would be raised, so we're just going to put a little shadow there. So just think, think in terms of 3D. So wherever you think bits of the spoon would be prominent, put a little shadow next to it. And then all we do is build up the lighter shades of the grey around it. So this is the most important bit really because this will dictate where you place the rest of your colours. Just have a little shadow in there. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the, uh, the bulb of the spoon. Behind this blend line, I'm just going to use a firmer hand. in that shadow okay and then what we'll do is bear with me and we'll go back to the next deepest grey which will be our 70% cool grey and as I say you can replicate these in in any pencils that you've got just try and use a cool grey so a white a, a white grey rather than a brown grey we don't want anything warm here because this is metallics. <sighs> right, okay, so I'm going to put that to one side and I'm going to go to my 70% cool grey. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to follow the 90% that I've laid down. And I'm just scumbling over to blend in. Because Prismacolors blend really easily. If you're using polys, you might want to layer up a little bit more. Because they're oil-based rather than wax-based, so they're harder. <laughs> so all I'm doing is following the shadows that I've laid down. Pressing on firmer. Just blending it by scumbling into that deep 90% grey. Okay. And just this little bit here. Tidy this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. 
and all the way up the stem just going to follow what I've already put down okay very very thin shadow layers around the inside of that 90% cool grey like that <laughs> and what we'll do is you see we'll build up the light we'll build up where the light will shine the most now you can do this the other way around but I tend to think placing the shadows first works better because then you can really kind of understand where you want your light and your dark to be. So we'll just carefully go around all these little bits and then we'll do exactly the same with the 50%. So there is no 60%. It jumps from 70 to 50. And I'm purposely leaving these outer bits for a lighter shade so that we get that effect of it being raised. Okay. Uh, we'll go to 50%. So we'll just join this up a little bit like that. Scumble it in. Follow the shape of the bowl of that spoon. So you've still got like a nice round oval shape. And you're leaving a blend line. A nice light touch blend line. And then scumbling over in a firmer hand to blend the previous colour. So just bear with me and we'll build it up and build it up. I'm just being careful to go around these gems. Make that slightly rounder there, just so that we're following the shape. Just make this little bit here, so we keep the, the oval shape in the middle. Just blend it, just blend it till you're happy with it. lines up so as you can see placing that initial shadow is the pointer for basically everything else that you put on the page and just always think about light and shade. And where light would shine off something that's metallic. Which would clearly be the bits of the spoon that are sticking further up into the air. going to go to uh, 30% yes 30% now what I'm going to do for my 30% is I'm going to start to build up the color on this uh, rim a little bit so but I want to keep it quite light because I want you to be able to see that it's the 
highest part of that spoon. And just work it in. And I think we'll take it down to here a little bit. Like that. Okay, so now I'm going to just give myself a blend line of a nice oval shape. Just scumbling it, medium firm hand, nothing too fancy. And now you can probably start to see where we're starting to get that effect because you can see the light is hitting the inside of that piece of the spoon and you can tell that it's shiny. And I'm going to leave this bit, and I'm going to leave this bit, and I'm going to do this little bit like that. Give myself a nice kind of circle there. Okay. Go back to these bits. And then I think we will again start on these outer little bits like that so same principle we're just placing lighter shadows if that makes sense Okay. Now before I go any further, I want my white. So I'm not going to go to 20% grey gray white yet. I'm going to go to my white. And then for these two little bits that I missed, I'm going to scumble in, in a medium firm hand, circles, little circles, and go over the edges of that 30%. And that just creates you a lovely little shine. And I'm going to do the same for this bit here. I'm just going to scumble in in a medium firm hand into a little circle. And that gives you a really nice shine. Okay. So I'm going to go to my 20%. And I'm just going to carry on with these little outer bits. And I'm leaving a bit of white in the middle because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white pencil and just pull down a little bit of this grey like that just so you've got a nice shine on that bit of the lip okay quickly the same at this side there we go. So I'm going to follow this round with my 20% cool grey. And I'm being careful to leave myself an oval in the middle. And then what we'll do is we'll pull gently across with the white. We're going to use our white as a blender pencil. And this is why I like the white rather than the 10% grey, because it just gives you that extra shine. Whereas a 10% grey would kind of be a little bit muted. Using the white just really works to kind of lift it. Okay. So now we're just going to finish up, up here. So I'm actually going to go back to my 30% cool grey for this inside bit. Just do myself a little outline. Like that. Back 
to the 20%. Leaving myself a little circle. And then we're going to use the white to scumble in a little shiny circle. Can you see? Very, very straightforward, but very effective. Back to the 20% and then what we're going to do is we're just going to finish off all of these little bits. I'll leave myself a little white bit there. Oh, actually missed that bit, just going to go back to my 30% there. Leave myself a little white bit. Bring this down, bring this up. So we're just following what we've laid down. I'm just going to leave the end of that white. Okay, now we're going to go back to the white pencil. Just put a little shine on the end of these. And that is us, just about done. So you can see, it's not difficult. You just need to understand where the shadows would be and placing that 90%. Um, so the last thing I've got is I've got a little um, Art Spicer um, silver uh, glitter pen. And all I'm gonna do is just for a little bit of finish, these little circles here. I'm just gonna fill them in. And that's what's done. So I hope you found it useful. You can apply this to any metallics. You could apply it to a palette of gold. You could apply it to a palette of bronze. So I hope it's been useful. As usual, any questions, drop me a line and I hope you give it a go. Bye for now.